Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to go over uh, some investment evaluation techniques in the context of an example. Specifically, you're given cash flows for two projects A and B, and you are being asked to evaluate or choose between these two mutually exclusive projects when the discount rate of 15% is given. It applies to both projects and you are being asked to compare these two projects using payback, IRR, profitability index and NPV. And so what I'm going to do is just go over the calculations uh, with you in Excel. So the first thing that we'll do is calculate the easy ones like IRR. So notice that if the cash flows are given, uh, then it is very easy to calculate IRR using the equal to IRR functionality. And so I just do this and then because it's a, both projects are uh, cap projects with conventional cash flows, in other words, you just have one negative number followed by positives, uh, you'll just get one IRR, so you don't have to guess any numbers, you just do this and be done with it. Now, uh, Excel is uh, by definition going to give you uh, the number that is a whole number, so if you want a more precise number, you want to change the format to two decimal places. So the IRR of project A is 18.74% and you can just copy this formula and then paste it over here. Uh, and this, as you can see, will give you the IRR for project B. And so the IRR for project B is 19.87%. Now be careful uh, if you try to uh, compare these two projects based on just IRR, you might say, well, Project B is the better project because it has a slightly higher IRR. But be careful because Project B is also a smaller scale project. And so we've uh, seen how in the past you could have a small scale project which may have a high IRR but actually have the higher NPV. In fact, if you calculate the NPV, we could do that. If you do equal to NPV uh, and then if you choose the discount rate 15% and I, I'm going to want to lock this cell so press the F4 button and these dollar signs appear right next to B and 10. This means that I want to make sure that my discount rate is always being referenced to this cell over here. So now if I press comma if I highlight all the cash inflows and then add the initial investment of 735 this comes out to 66,165. And if I now copy this formula and then paste it over here, uh, the NPV for project B is coming out about uh, 58,158. And if you double click on this cell right here, you'll notice that uh, because I had locked in this B10 cell, notice that as I move from column C to D, only the cash inflows and outflows over here, they moved forward, but the discount rate remained the same. And so that's why we wanted to uh, lock this uh, cell over here so that uh, the formula can be copied properly. This is very important. Uh, anyway, if you'd now take a look at these two values, well, the NPV of project A is higher. And so this tells you why it would have been misleading to go with project B based on the higher IRR because in terms of NPV, project A is adding more uh, value to the firm. Now, one other thing that we can calculate is something called the profitability index. Profitability index basically tells us for every $1 that we're spending in terms of initial investment, how much are we getting back in terms of present value of the inflows. And so the way we can do that is by taking the discounted value of all the cash inflows. So we can do equal to NPV and then our discount rate is 15%. And again, I'm, once I give the cell reference, I'm going to press F4 so that this cell gets locked. And then I'm going to discount these cash inflows and then divide by my initial investment of 735,000. The problem is that this guy is a negative number over here. So I want to make sure that this is a, this is a positive. So I'll do negative one multiplied by uh, this guy so that this, this ensures that the denominator is also a positive number. And so the profitability index for project A comes out to 1.09. If I do control C and then control V, then the profitability index for project B comes out to 1.13. And again, notice that uh, because I had given this uh, cell reference and locked it in for the discount rate, notice that as I copy the formula here and then paste it, 
uh, only these values, cell references for these values moves one column to the right, but not this. And so that's an important thing to bear in mind. Uh, notice that the profitability index uh, for project B is higher. Uh, and this is the same thing that we noticed in IRR. The IRR for project B was higher than project A as well. But we noticed that NPV of A is higher. And so you might say, well, project B seems better in terms of NP, uh, in terms of IRR and profitability index. But notice that both IRR and profitability index suffer from the scale problem. Uh, if I tell you for every $1 that you're putting in, you're going to get $5 back in present value terms. The profitability index uh, may very well be 5 but would you rather have a profitability index of five or would you rather make say 200,000 uh, in present value terms on a 100,000 investment? That would be a profitability index of two, uh, but you might say, well, I'd rather make uh, you know 200,000 rather than the 100,000. And that's the scale problem. That's the same problem that IRR has. And so my point is that just by looking at IRR and profitability index, uh, you, you, you don't wanna say project B is better um, not necessarily at least, uh, project A seems to have higher NPV. Now the one other thing that we can calculate is something called the payback period as the name suggests. This tells us when the project is going to be paid back. And so to calculate uh, project A's uh, payback period, uh, we can calculate first the cumulative cash flows because this tells us how much uh, we are down by at each year or at each stage of the project's life. So for example, in, at uh, the time period zero, we are down by $735,000 because that is how much we've spent. By the end of year one, we would have recovered 239,000. So if somebody asks us, you know, how much uh, are you down by, by the end of year one, you'll say, well, 239,000 is what I'm getting. Uh, add to that, uh, this uh, negative 735,000. So now I'm down by 496,000. And now if I copy this and then paste it, uh, what we notice is that uh, by the end of year two, you would have recovered another 239,000, which you can add to how much you were down by by the end of year one, which means that by the end of year two, you're down by 257,000. By the end of year three, you're down by $18,000. But then at the end of year four or by year four, you receive 239,000 and now you're in the positive. So just by looking at these numbers, we know that we're getting paid back between three and four years. So uh, after three years, but before four. Uh, so somewhere during the fourth year. So our payback for project A is gonna be three, which is the minimum number of years it takes, plus, in the fourth year, we're getting $239,000, but we don't need the full $239,000 uh, to recover our initial investment. Rather, we only need $18,000. And so we're gonna say, look, of the fourth year, we only need 18,000 uh, uh, or 18,000 fraction of $239,000. So what I'm trying to say here is that this is gonna be uh, negative one multiplied by this guy because we want to make sure that this is a positive number and we're going to divide that by $239,000. And so uh, the payback period for project A then is going to be about 3.075 years. Uh, if you do the same thing for project B, for project B we first need to calculate the cumulative cash flows. So I'm going to just copy all of this and paste it right here. Uh, so, so this ensures that uh, for project B, we are spending 460,000 and then when we, when we recover 130, we're now down by 330. And so notice that for project B also, we are recovering our initial investment during the fourth year. Uh, but specifically in the fourth year, we're gonna get 173,000 for project B but we only need 29,700 off that amount. And so we're gonna do equal to, so this is the end of year three, so three plus, and then negative one uh, multiplied by this guy to make sure that this is a positive number and then divide that by the amount that we are actually getting in the fourth year. And so this comes out to 3.17 years. And so now these are all the metrics for project A and B. 
If somebody now asks you which project would you go with, you could take a look at all of these metrics and then make a more informed decision. As we have suggested, IRR and profitability index suffer from the scale problem, so you might be inclined uh, to lean more towards uh, NPV and also the fact that project A has a lower payback period if you were to ask me I'd go with project A primarily because it has the higher NPV also pays back a little bit quicker and also you know given the fact that IRR and profitability index do not account for scale my recommendation would be to go with project A.